I haven't made them yet and I already know they're going to be bad. Hi kittens and welcome back to Cat Talks. My name is Cat. this is the place where I talk all about books and writing. And today I've given up on hiding my addiction from you all and I'm just going to drink Diet Coke on stage. Coke, don't sponsor me. If anything, I sponsor Coke. <laughs> Today I wanted to talk about whether we should judge the book by the cover, and to do this I'm going to be trying, with my very limited artistic skill set, to design three book covers for three uh, popular books, I'm not so sure, but you know, the three highest rated books in my Goodreads TBR. So I don't actually know what these books are about, all I will have to go on is the blurb, and I'm going to try really hard not to look at the cover, uh, and then I'm going to design my own bad cover for them. Uh, this is also going to be a lesson on why you should think twice about designing a book cover because I think we're all going to agree like I haven't made them yet and I already know they're going to be bad because I have no skills at all. Uh, but we're going to see how it goes and let's jump right in. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea if you can see me, but we're just going to have to go with it until I can afford a camera where I know that you can. Uh, you know, one of those cameras with a little flip, flippy screeny so I can see myself would be fantastic. But since we're not that rich, let's just work with what we have. Alright, so the first tool that I'm going to use to create a book cover is going to be Canva. So Canva is a free online graphic design tool and you can usually tell if someone's used Canva because, you know, it will be very a specific look. But they have a lot of templates to choose from and they've recently added book covers in there so I wanted to try it out and see what we could get. Screen recording. Uh, first I need Goodreads to tell me what book I'm going to be designing a book cover for. Okay, awesome. So for our first uh, first design, we're gonna be designing The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, which is one of my favorite time, favorite of all time books. It's not that great as a book by itself, but the series is fantastic and Robin Hobb can write, let me tell you. So let's go to it. So first we choose that we want to design a book cover and we read the blurb. The blurb is, Fitz is a royal bastard cast out into the world with only his magical link with am animals for solace and companionship. But when he is adopted into the royal household, he must give up his old ways and learn a new life. Weaponry, scribing, courtly manners, and how to kill a man. Meanwhile, raiders ravage the coasts, leaving the people forged and soulless. So they're like zombies, kind of. Uh, as Fitz grows towards manhood, he will have to face his first terrifying mission. A task that poses as much risk to himself as it does to his target, because Fitz is a threat to the throne, but he may also be the saviour of the kingdom. Alright, so this, uh, this cover was created by John Howe, who clearly knows what he's doing, so let's not look at that. It's not a romance book, so we don't want to choose this one, or this one. Uh, it's not really a thriller. It's not really a photo. Uh, it's not a cookbook. Okay, novel book covers. So now we're going to have a look at all of the different styles of a novel. And we have a couple. You will notice that some of them don't say free when I mouse over them. I'd like you to figure out why. Let's go with the first one. The Dryad by Stephanie Harper. Okay, so first of all, it's The Assassin's Apprentice. Assassin's... Apprentice. You're already seeing like we might have a problem here. So let's just make that not 354 large. Okay, but that's also too small. So maybe 200? Maybe 220? Let me get rid of that because nobody needs that. It's just The Assassin's Apprentice and it's by Robin Hobb. So that's already sorted. And from what I remember, there is a dog in this. So let's have a look at Boy with Dog. I love stock photographs because they are so darn like specific but unfortunately all of these are not free they'll have little dollar signs next to them and little king signs so we are going to go to what's it called pixel bay i think yes pixel bay is a source of free images that you can use so we are going to go with boy dog and i really want something that's like a little black and white like a like you can see them from behind kind of thing this is cute though. This is really cute. Um, I wonder if I can put in silhouettes. Silhouette. I can't spell silhouette, so. Thank you, MacBook. See, that might be good. Then we also need like a little bit of magic, so let's put that in first. Can I use this? 
Can I use this with the giant shutterstock? No. No. Bad shutterstock. So, no. So, none of those would work out. So, uh, teenager. Assassin? Assassin. That's not going to work out. Also, teenagers, probably. Let's go for assassin and see what we get. Oh yeah. Um, I'm loving all of the adult content. What? That's not appropriate. I just want to like some vials or something. Okay, let's look for some vials. See, this is already like, I'm so proud of anyone who actually manages to do this because ho, oh, ho. Oh. Okay, well that's a cute message, but not very useful. Mm. Why does vials give me, like, roads? What is it about the word vile? Uh, if they don't have flowers in, this would be good, but they very have flowers in. I'm just gonna go with this one. Oh, no, this one, this one. All right, let's so just save the image. We have load the image. These are all just pictures of me, so just ignore all the pictures of me. We've clearly used this place before. Nice. Now, obviously white isn't going to work anymore, so let's try a couple. I quite like the blood red. Blood. Is that a thing? That is not a thing. You cannot search for blood. This one. Yeah. I would love to be able to like move it up. I guess I could make it bigger. Like that. <laughs> it's like covering up my words. God damn it. Maybe like this. Yeah. Okay. And then we just change the font to something a bit more like I'm a fantasy novel. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe not. Maybe not the first thing I see. Cabin sketch? I kind of want it to look like it's handwritten, but I'm not sure. Can we make that just a giant A? Can this be giant without like 600? No, cannot do that. No, no, I was, come back. Okay. Gi great vibes. Do you know what? We want great vibes. And it became a, a giant A. I don't really like the S's, but we're gonna have to. What about Grand Hotel? Ooh, Grand Hotel's pretty good. <laughs> this is so bad. All right, now let's put a filter on the... Uh... Yes, I'm down for that. What about Nordic? Nordic is also kind of great, to be honest. And maybe we could even change the color, like... So let's just check this is turned off. It wasn't. Uh, secret romance sounds correct, but no. Let's just all go with pomegranate crush. All right, so this is what I've got so far. So a lot of this is actually how I do my thumbnails, um, which if you haven't seen are also quite ugly. So if you're thinking what, with no planning and no experience and no artistic talent? Yes, you're right. Let's get to it. All right, so apparently I messed up and I sorted my Goodreads shells through my rating rather than the average rating, so let's try that again. Um, so it's not going to be Blood Red Horse because I just realised this has a really low rating, which is how I knew that I had done it wrong. Okay, so instead of randomly choosing which books I'm going to read for the which books I'm going to create covers for, I'm just going to choose a book that I personally want to make a cover for because this is not going well. So I have picked The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a book set in the World War World War II, I think, during the French occupation by Nazis. Again, I haven't read this book, but it won a Goodreads choice in 2015, so it's about two sisters who are living in France. One of them has a kid and one of them doesn't, and it's about the choices they make during the Nazi occupation. Let's do this. So the first thing we need to do when we get here is to create a new um, background. This is a leftover from the last thing I was doing. Let's just uh, set this to black. 
Okay, so <laughs> so the nightingale, like I said, is set in France during the Nazi occupation. So let's first of all put some words on it. Uh, it's about sisterliness, so blue is fine. Colour of sisters. A sister's pink or blue cancel. I don't know what I don't know what this is, but it scares me. Like when it goes half and half, I'm like, I don't I don't know what that does. The first thing that I'm gonna do actually, instead of writing the title black on black, is to find a colour scheme. So when I'm looking for a colour scheme for a thumbnail, I usually use this website. So this is Colour Palettes. It gives you free colour palettes and I love it so much. So this is pretty. Uh, let's look for a couple, so I'm not just picking the first one we see. So colour palettes are designer chosen colours from a picture that's got really like bright colours and they pick out the colours. So when you, I'm just going to say colour over a hundred times. But when you're designing a website, for example, you would use a colour palette to have the dark mode and then how you draw attention to various things. Uh, if we go to Rotten Tomatoes, they often pop buttons with yellow. So you see here it's yellow here and here and here and they will have gotten that from a colour palette, not necessarily based on a photo. Sometimes they are just colour palettes that, cre that are created by people. So in this case, the colour palette would have been white, grey, red and yellow. I feel like the Nightingale is quite a sad book from what I understand, so let's go with this colour palette. So uh, let's first of all fill in the background with that colour. See, it's already looking nicer. And then we write something, the Nightingale. And then we change the colour to one of these. So I am actually going to try out this one. That's really gross <laughs> and depressing, so no. That's like a pale green. You see, this is the now the pale green. That is way better. So we'll make it a bit bigger. Actually, we should choose the font first. Yeah, beautiful. So this is where the colour palette comes in handy because now I can give it a different colour if I want to than the title and it will still all kind of work together. She says it will all work together and then it doesn't. Now, I have no idea what a nightingale looks like so let's look for one, shall we? Did I spell it right this time? I did! It's a bird. It's a very confused looking bird. Oh my god, it's so cute! Wait, this is not a nightingale, is it? Nests are so gross looking. <laughs> he looks so surprised. Nab that and try it out. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. Oh, it's so cute. This bird is super cute. Uh, obviously it does not work with my color scheme at all because the grass is green and stuff, but that's okay. So we can have a new layer. And then it's the mask that we want to edit. So we just fill that with gray here. And then the nightingale comes through. Also, the text is over the nightingale's eye, which is like uncool. Can we move the nightingale down a bit? Yes, yes, okay. What happens if we fill, oh, I kind of like that. And just to remind you what it looks like without the filter, boop. So it's given it like a purple cast kind of. Uh, we can also make the cast more or less gray by, not that, by doing this. Mix it more purpley. And actually that makes the nightingale stand out a lot more. I actually really like that. Why are the the and the nightingale so far apart? This will have to do, because this is all we have time for. So this is my cover for the nightingale set in France and about two sisters. I feel like there should have been another nightingale in there now that I, I remember that it's about two sisters. These two nightingales that don't look like they get on could be a good choice. So you should never take uh, images that you don't have the rights to, obviously. I'm gonna do that though. I'm gonna take this image right here that I do not have the rights to for the purposes of the video. I'm not gonna obviously use this for profit or anything really other than for fun. So here is my angry looking one and I'm just going to use this tool, this tool. Okay, this tool sucks. So we have another bird here and I want that bird to be like in the distance. So like, oh damn. So I definitely want it to be here, obviously. But I also want it to be like smaller maybe, and also like down here, like behind this one, right? So we don't need the whole bird, actually, I'm thinking about it. We just need this much bird. So we're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna move this one above it, and then we're gonna delete. I'm gonna add to alpha, add to, okay, it already has. We're gonna delete everything that isn't this wing. So because we have two of the front bird, we're able to like give the impression that we have moved this nightingale behind it, even though like if I move it over here, it's going to be really weird. So you can see where I cut off, but this should be fine. Yeah. All right, so I didn't have any plain paper, so we're going to work with what we have, which is obviously lined. 
and you're just gonna have to pretend that the lines aren't there. So we are going to be drawing a book cover for Proper English. Proper English is a novel about a murder in this English country house during kind of like the Elizabethan or Victorian times and also it's um, after a short shooting party. Now this book was absolutely phenomenal so uh, let's get to it. So it's the Victorian age so I'm thinking we will want a dress with like you know Victorian -y. Now romance novels tend to be two people embracing but I can't draw so we'll do our best. So I'm gonna be using my MacBook to Google inspiration and I'm going to be looking for Milson Boons. Isn't it called like historical romances? Yeah. So we're looking for a dude and a woman or a woman and a woman that I can steal. But I like this one. Okay, so some of them are just a woman on her own, but a lot of them are a woman and a man. So let's have the woman. Uh, she's kind of like here-ish. This is her face, and then she has a neck, because most of us have a neck. All right, so I didn't have any plain paper, so we're gonna work with what we have, which is obviously lined, and you're just gonna have to pretend that the lines aren't there. Um, so we are going to be drawing a book cover for proper English. Proper English is a novel about a murder in this English country house during kind of like the Elizabethan or Victorian times and also it's um, after a short shooting party. Now this book was absolutely phenomenal so uh, let's get to it. So it's the Victorian age so I'm thinking we will want a dress with like, you know, Victorian -y. Um Now romance novels tend to be two people embracing but I can't draw so we'll do our best. So I'm gonna be using my MacBook to Google inspiration. A bazoom bazoom's buttons and then a, a little belt. If anyone was wondering, I'm trying to copy the marriage rescue. And then this is where the book finishes, so uh, let's pretend that's where I finished. Also, look how gigantic his hand is. I feel like maybe the finger should have come here. Oh yeah, that good hand edge. He's just giving her a little grope. Except for again, it's a woman. I want it to be like obvious that it's a woman, but I suppose the neckline, she says not having drawn this one a neck. I wish they put rubbers on these things, eh? She will also have shoulders, because they will come down to become this gigantic sleeve. I don't know how long people's arms are, oh god. But anyway, I feel like this, this lady will come out. I mean, <laughs> come out. And she's got a gigantic ear, apparently. So it's kind of like the design choice I've made. Don't know really what her hair's doing, because this is the end of the book cover that I'm copying, which is now Cinderella and the Duke. Heavily eyeshadow in your eyes, and then she's got a cheek. You do. And then like the most luscious pair of lips. Yeah, I'm actually kind of proud of that. And she looks old. It's because I doubled, doubled up her cheek situation. Never double up the cheek situation. She still looks kind of old, but you know what? We're going with it. To be honest. Not getting paid for this time. Uh, like this. Help. Uh, so she has lace coming down here. Just a very laced pair, really.
judging a book by the book cover, I've still got the Diet Coke. So judging a book by its cover, it leads to all kinds of problems, but I'm not gonna lie, I do it and I bet you do it too. It is a very easy way to tell what kind of book it is. For example, if it's a fantasy novel about an assassin, it's probably gonna have blades and a shadowy figure on the front and maybe some trees like framing the shadowy figure. If it's a book about if it's a book about a shifter, it usually has like a transparent wolf or a transparent animal and then a dude or a woman who's like ripped. Uh, and that's usually a book about a, a shifter. Um, if it is a book about a vampire, there's probably fangs or at least a hot dude with some spiky hair on the cover, that kind of thing. Now, the reason that this kind of like genre identifiers work is that you see them and you think, I've read lots of books that looked like that, that were great. This one's probably also going to fulfill that same need inside me that fed with these other books. Uh, but the reason that this can go badly is because often the book cover will mistell. So especially with indie publishing, it is very hard to get a feel for the genre and get a feel for the, for the target audience if you don't have a full marketing team behind you and you don't have any marketing experience. Target audience is super important when thinking about your book cover and thinking about the elements inside that book cover. So let's say that you're writing a contemporary romance about a young woman who works in a coffee shop and a regular customer or another person in there. Now you and I might be thinking, oh, just put a coffee cup on the front and maybe a wood grain background and Job's your uncle and Bob's your uncle, uh, but it isn't quite that easy. <laughs> if you just put a coffee cup on the front on the cover, you're not gonna be talking about the fact that these two people are falling in love, for example. Usually in romance, you have a picture of the woman and man on the front or at least one of them. I'm not sure why, because I feel like a lot of romances are written to be self inserts, like to put me in that, especially the Mills and Boons ones. Uh, but anyway, they will have pictures, I guess, of the love interest so that you are inspired to think of yourself next to those apps. Uh, he doesn't need a face, like who, who needs a face in publishing, am I right? Uh, but yes, it can be very tricky and books with bad covers tend not to sell very well. Whereas on the flip side, Bookstagram is really making a big thing out of selling books based on the beautiful cover. And that's where the hashtag Bookstagram made me do it comes from. These are books that people literally buy because the cover is beautiful. It doesn't necessarily matter that the story inside is good, as long as you can take a picture of it next to a vase of flowers or a bowl of fruit or a candle or anything like that, right? So it's a tricky one. If we look at this cover, for example, I haven't read this book either, but this is Sleeping Giants. It's supposed to be a really good sci-fi told in mixed media. Uh, you can tell immediately that this book is about looking to the stars for answers because there are stars in there. It's also a sci-fi book about people being out there or, or something being out there in the in the world above us, in the stars, because you can see the face here. And you can just tell that it's something unique and it's about stars and it's about maybe humanity's identity from just this cover. Can you see I have no artistic talent? If we look at the Godsgraves covers, these are phenomenal, let me just say, because they usually have elements of the story. Now, again, I haven't read God's Grave yet, and I know that is a very, very sad thing because I have to give this back to the library tomorrow. But usually in these images of God's Grave, Jay Kristoff's team have done a very unique thing because they put elements of the story inside the animal. So there's a boat here, so I'm gonna assume there's a boat, there's a raven, there is a colossum, colossum? Colossus. Uh, a helmet, another raven, a cat, because the familiar is a cat. Like there are so many images worked into this and it also has the sun, which I just realized it has one of the suns for the three suns that are above this planet. But just from looking at it, you can tell that it is a very dark fantasy because it's all in black and white except the sun. You can tell that it has a lot going on. It's a very complex plot because of the complex image, but because the image is all kind of like all these complex elements feed into the one image, you can also see, you can also kind of like trust that you're in good hands. I mean, if the author didn't give it away, and it's very clearly a fantasy because there are very, it's a very fantastical way of showing the image by combining all of these images into one. Picking a book I have read, we have the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This is actually the movie cover, I believe. It's a mass market paperback. And this shows that the book, if, if I'd been paying attention, I would have known that the book was told about, uh, was about letters or about a correspondence because it has obviously the post stamps here and the, what are they called? Frank marks, there we go, Frank marks. And then it's got this very kind of like off, off focus picture of a woman so that you feel like you're maybe going to get to know her through the story and or that you're going to get an idea of her at least. And the handwriting also gives it a way that it's going to be very much about letters and about a literary pursuit. However, I'm not sure that I would recommend a cover like this because honestly, I looked at it and thought there's not going to be anything special in there for me. It's just kind of like an average wartime story. And obviously, once I read it, I was very in love with it. So I'm not sure maybe a stack of letters would have been preferable I don't know let's 
let's not assume that I can make book covers based on what we just saw. So that has been my take on why you should or shouldn't judge a book on its cover and kind of like a look at books in general in the publishing world today. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below anything you think I've got wrong, which of these three book covers was your favourite and more. I love you guys very much. I hope you have a great book and a tasty cup of tea to fall into. Don't fall into your cup of tea. Fall into your book though. And I will see you guys next time.